welcome to Morning Manor with Pastor Steve Mary. Today's topic, From Doubt to Faith. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower, and I will watch to see what he will say unto me. And what shall I answer when I am reproved? And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain upon the tablets, that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Behold, the soul which lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. Habakkuk 2, 1 through 4. God has given everyone a measure of faith. There is not a living person that does not have faith. Scientists, philosophers, professors, and educators say they cannot believe in God because it takes faith. Yet those same people get into their cars and travel speeds greater than 70 miles per hour and have faith in something that they cannot see to stop them. They have faith that air will always be there to breathe. They have faith in an email that is sent from one part of the world and reaches the next. They have faith in an unknown, unseen, unprovable, cataclysmic event that supposedly started life. On that note, when we think of evolution, have you ever wondered why people and animals still drown if people evolve to adapt to their needs of survival? These great minds have faith in everything I just mentioned, yet they say they can't believe in God because it takes faith. I propose they do have faith, they just don't know where to place it. Everyone is born with a measure of faith. Now, what about our faith? We need living faith in our lives. Living faith takes us from doubt to confidence, from questions to answers, from perplexity to purpose, and from anxiety to assuredness. The Pentecostal Church of 2020 needs to move from doubt to faith. Every child of God at some point in their life has entered the arena of doubt. Our problem is not to visit the arena of doubt, but the problem comes if we reside there. It is Satan's goal to cause doubt in our minds. Satan caused Eve to doubt the word of God. The next step of Satan was to bring in a lie. We do not live our lives by moral human comprehension, but by faith in God. Our faith in God perplexes the greatest minds of men. 1 Corinthians 1.25 reminds us, Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. The most powerful minds of man stands in confusion while they live a life of clarity. Truly doubt destroys while faith saves. While those around us are crumbling in doubt, we live happy and strong in our faith. Our worlds may come crashing down around us, yet we have faith in God. The disciples came to the withered fig tree. Peter said, look at the fig tree you cursed. Jesus replied with, have faith in God. No matter the strength of the adversary, have faith in God. No matter the worry and confusion, have faith in God. No matter how bad pain gets, have faith in God. No matter how hot the furnace gets, have faith in God. No matter how Lazarus has been dead for four days, have faith in God. No matter how you've been blind all your life, have faith in God. No matter the amount of persecution, have faith in God. No matter the intensity of the struggle, have faith in God. If you're in doubt today, my encouragement to you is have faith in God. The thought of the day, our faith in God perplexes the greatest minds of men. Just before I go, let me encourage all our teachers, parents, and students who will be embarking on this new journey tomorrow, going back to school. In many ways, there are challenges that we face. However, I encourage you, to have faith in the God of your salvation, and you'll get through this. God bless you today, in Jesus' name. Please remember to like and subscribe to my page on YouTube. Your support is much appreciated. Hey, we make a miracle walker, promise keeper, light in the darkness.